Today, we're speaking with Ryan Austin. He's the founder and CEO of Synapse. And we've heard so many sales reps speak about how they always keep their eyes open. They've got a side hustle. And when we think about someone who exemplifies and personifies that idea of seizing opportunities, I can't think of anybody who does that more than Ryan. Looking forward to sharing his story. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Seller's Journey, the podcast where we speak to great sales reps and leaders and share their real stories from start to sales success. Hi, everyone. I'm Joseph Fung, and today I'm here with Ryan Austin. Ryan, I love the way you introduce yourself on LinkedIn, making the magic happen at Synapse. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks, Joseph. Awesome. And where are you calling in from today? I'm calling in from... Uh... What's my new office, my kitchen table, <laughs> given everything <laughs> going on with COVID uh, in Toronto, Ontario. Nice, nice. Now, we speak a lot about journeys. So starting at the beginning, uh, you're calling from Toronto. Uh, is that where you grew up? Uh, where did you grow up? Where'd you go to school? So I, I grew up um, in Richmond Hill. I went to high school at St. Andrews College in Aurora. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so I was kind of a, a, bo a, I was in boarding school for a few years, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur, in your early days, you usually get in trouble. So <laughs> that's where I found my footing. <laughs> I, I grew up just north of there. Uh, and, and I remember driving by SAC all the time. So that's a small world. Yeah. Nice. Uh, thinking a little bit about your journey. Uh, one of the things that strikes me from all of our conversations was just how often you've done a great job of kind of seizing and pursuing opportunities. And the one that sticks out to me the most is what you're doing during your time at university. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about Austin Global Wholesaling? <laughs> yeah, it's a blast from the past. So, you know, I've, <laughs> It's, it's funny because um, I'm now the uh, CEO of a company called Synapse, um, which is in corporate training and in education. But uh, going back to my university days, I wasn't the best student. I've always had kind <laughs> of uh, a problem learning and just sitting in class and absorbing information that way, um, mm -hmm. where I would be sitting there and you know the professors would be talking, but really nothing was being absorbed. It was kind of like just my mind wandering, thinking about ideas, et cetera. So um, in Western, I ended up turning my dorm room into kind of a, a little campus shop that competed with uh, the university's campus shop until they asked me to stop. <laughs> um, so I, I ended up taking it online and building this affiliate uh, program where People could start their own websites and we'd populate it with uh, with product. And uh, there was a viral component to it where um, um, back in the day when there was this email blaster widget where you can invite people to your website or whatnot, um, kind of ne network affiliate marketing. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great little uh, adventure at the beginning and it taught me a lot about entrepreneurship. Yeah, this sounds exciting and it sounds like a kind of rapid rise to success, but I can only imagine how challenging it could be getting to customers, you know, from being stuck in a dorm room in a city you didn't grow up in. How'd you do that? Uh, th that was more wor word of mouth, you know, just using um, online, online blogs around the campus and whatnot. Um, letting people we ha know that we, we, we had certain um, school supplies or merchandise to help them. We were importing it from different places, like back in the day when nobody really knew about what Alibaba was. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, it, w it was really interesting. And, um, and then when we took it online, we, we built these relationships with the manufacturers to, to drop ship before kind of drop shipping was a thing. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's how we got around, you know, when we're asked, Hey, stop, stop selling stuff out of your dorm room. <laughs> and we <laughs> built a website. That's, that's kind of what we ended up doing. So you went from dorm room, selling online, your know, network, uh, marketing, and you, you moved on to, to an interesting role at the world trade group, 
a word trade group. Can you share a little bit about how that came to be and how you landed that role and what that was like? Yeah, it was uh, that was an interesting time in life. So uh, I was doing Austin Global Wholesaling and, um, you know, I'm in tech, but at the time I didn't really know too much about tech. Mm. So um, I, I saved up a lot of money from um, that online business and getting it going and whatnot. And I ended up partnering with this firm, um, you know, they said they have an office in Chicago, they had an office in Toronto that I visited, they had an engineering office in India with 300 engineers, and it ended up not being uh, as described, I guess you could say. And oh. so I was kind of in my early 20s, um, I gave this firm and these these people a lot of those savings to try and scale up something without knowing too much about business at the time mm. and uh and uh they ended up kind of taking me for a run so uh tried to get my money back i ended up having a lawsuit um and at that time i was just trying to survive so i said okay till this blows over i need to figure out a way to uh to pay for all this stuff so i'm going to go into sales so i i took a level uh entry level sales position at world trade group and i think back then like the base salary was like 25 grand a year something mm -hmm. low, low like that so i uh, just had to really hustle and sell my way out of it and uh which i was able to do wow starting from uh from kind of that entry level in the midst of recovering from that kind of stress must have been really tough. Oh yeah. There was definitely uh, walks on lunch where I would, I would cry for sure. <laughs> Other than, than walking at lunch, uh, what are, what are some of the things that you developed as, as kind of coping and, and management techniques? Uh, you know, for, for people who are going through similar stressful situations, what are some of the things they could learn from, from your uh, kind of management practices? It's there, there's no real secret secret I would say I mean there's been lots of times um, where I you know life kind of throws punches and it's really really hard and it's always important to know that like it, it could always be worse right mm -hmm. and and um, I think one of the main things which is one of our values actually at Synapse is being able to embrace uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Because realistically, there's so many times where I was like, oh, you know, my life's over. I'm in this lawsuit. I'm in my early 20s. I have this 25K job. How am I going to survive? Didn't even have two bucks to go on the streetcar at the time. You know, um, how am I going to pay for this lawsuit to try and get this money back? You just don't know what's around the corner and like what life will throw at you. And that's when the good luck happens to, to beat like what feels to beat the times when you feel your lowest. So, um, and there's been a thousand times. So actually based off of your message on my LinkedIn, making the magic happen, that's, that's what I call the magic. It comes from embracing uncertainty. So oh. whenever you feel low, you know, if you can build the courage and the willpower to trust the process and just really focus on the power of now or what's in your control, without trying to manufacture all this stress and problems on the unknown. Um, mm -hmm. Because there's so many times where you just, you know, you, you kind of brainwash yourself that it's over or, or there's a problem or, or whatnot. But realistically, you don't have the answer and you don't know what could happen tomorrow. You could win the lottery. Uh, an investor could approach you. There's, there's so many factors about the unknown. So really embracing uncertainty and which is one of the hardest things to do as a human being in my perspective but at the same time being able to trust the process and know that at the end of the day everything will probably be okay then you can start seeing the magic happen because it becomes okay i love how you talk about that idea of kind of embracing uncertainty trusting the process but that's that's an inherently optimistic message in the way you're sharing it. I've, I've encountered people who em, embrace uncertainty and that leads them to be, you know, very risk adverse because you never know what could go wrong. Uh, but I love how you focused on, you never know what could go right. Uh, and I think that's a, a great way to look at it. Yeah, that, that's a good point. 
I, I haven't looked at it like that, but that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so thinking about that, I, I I opened up the conversation talking about side hustles, um, seizing opportunities, and you shared this time where you're in that entry, you know, level sales rule, you're building it up, uh, but then you moved on and, and it looks like you recovered from that to founding another company, uh, you know, Inacuity. Can you share a little bit about the idea behind that company? Yeah, well, um, so going through the World Trade Group, basically, the first three months was sales, sales, sales. I had a friend mm-hmm. who kind of mentored me around sales, uh, somebody named Dan. And, uh, you know, he kind of beat me up every day. No, you got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. But um, eventually kind of the message drilled in and uh, I became the top salesperson, uh, you know, entry, entry level salesperson. So I was asked to manage a team. And then three months after that, I was asked to manage three sales teams. And then I noticed that um, this company's competitors had a corporate training department or division where they were building corporate training opportunities, but they didn't. So I pitched the board to basically create that startup within their company. So I got promoted to becoming the senior vice president. Uh, That department became the most profitable division in the company. And then they were acquired by a private equity group. Um, It was at that time where I was like, okay, I'm kind of back on my feet. What do I want to do? I want to get into tech, but I don't really know what yet. So um, but I do know how to make some money with corporate training. So let me go and create a corporate training company. So that, that's what rolled into what you just mentioned. And, um, it was kind of a, a cash flow business. It wasn't too scalable. It was kind of one time revenue, but it was a great side hustle until I figured what I wanted to do. And, um, during that time, that's actually when we started recognizing the problems that Synapse solves today. Mm. Um, and um, and I was also taking uh, money at the time um, and um, because it was a cash flow business and thinking about other investments and whatnot um, and, uh, and invested in um, a company called GoFishCam that my brother ended up uh, operating and managing when he graduated university. So I, I'm glad you brought it up because I want to touch base on that because clearly, you know, as you're you know, recovering from a business challenge, setting yourself up in sales, launching a company, you know, the best thing to do is to, to go and help launch a second company um, <laughs> in a completely unrelated field, no less, underwater fishing cameras. Yeah. What the heck? Okay, tell, how did this happen? Yeah, it was it was funny because uh, basically I was running in Acuity and I was at a wedding in Trinidad, and um, as as all good starting stories start with. <laughs> yeah, you know, with a, beer and and friends. No, but um, we were on, we were on this catamaran. My friend, I had a friend Reza, and he was like, you know, I really want to start this start a business but i don't know what i want to start and i'm like ah i'll I'll come up with an idea for you by the end of this trip um but then and you can run it and i'll help fund it right because i was looking to kind of diversify and do some investments um then and so uh he was like okay so anyways i came up with the idea of this underwater fishing camera um Mm -hmm. and um because we're on this boat You know, the locals were fishing off the back. Somebody got a big bite. The fish got away. And they were like, oh, I wonder what it was. Should we go back? Should we go back? And like, at the time, I was like, I wonder, like, if you could see something, like, what would happen? So I started Googling it. um, And I couldn't find anything online except that people were literally trying to weld their GoPro, GoPro cameras on their fishing lures. So I was like, okay, maybe <laughs> maybe there's something here. So um, uh, Reza and I, we we were meaning to, we, we went, we agreed to build this prototype. We started building this prototype for this fishing camera, and then came time to kind of like foot the bill. And he's like, mm-hmm. do you know what? Like, uh, I can't do this. I'm I'm out. So I was like, okay, well, now I have this bill to pay for this fishing camera and I, I can't really operate this company cause I'm running Sanat, um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, in acuity at time. And, uh, 
but my brother was graduating university and I, you know, I said, what do you want to do? And he said, I want to go into entrepreneurship. I said, what do you want? What do you want? Like, what are you going to do? He's like, I don't know yet. I'm like, why don't you just run GoFish Cam? I'll give it to you. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll become partners. So that, that, that's how that happened. Nice. Nice. So uh, there's this theme here of seizing opportunities. And I know that with the, the whole pandemic, and people moving online, you're going to be helping a ton of organizations see similar opportunities. So that's that's super exciting. Uh, if you think about that journey, you know, leveraging the idea of the optimism and, and trusting uncertainty, we're living in uncertain times. What do you think the future holds? You know, what do you what do you think is going to happen for for your business, and what do you aspire to to accomplish? Yeah, Synapse is really interesting because back in the day with Inacuity. Um, we were having this problem that the process of designing curriculum and creating new content, um, not the actual authoring of the content, but the whole planning and collaboration and working with people to assemble the curriculum, um, that it was just too complex and time consuming. And it was a very manual process. So we were trying to find tools because as a service company back then, uh, it was just killing our, our margins. Uh, it was taking so much time. So we, we went kind of on this far and wide search, couldn't find any technology. We were partnered with this accreditation institute at the time. Uh, we asked them if they knew of any technology. They said, no, there's none that they know of that exists. Let them know because they have a bunch of clients that would want that if uh, to help their clients streamline processes. So that's where the, the idea of um, Synapse was formed. And I ended up going through an accelerator and moving to the United States after that program just to get experience in the States at the time Toronto wasn't where it is today. Um, where people were very growth minded and whatnot. And so I went to the States to get some experience and uh, a Fortune 10 company read about us in the Houston Chronicle newspaper. We got an article on hmm. the idea of what we wanted to build um, through this accelerator. And this Fortune 10 company approached us. They said, hey, we would love to see your technology. And I'm like, well, doesn't exist yet. Here's kind of the uh, PowerPoint of what we're planning to do. And they said, this is a problem for us. You know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll help to fund the, you know, the startup of like to, to, to do some R and D so that we could get our hands on this um, and support you. And so uh, they ended up becoming our first uh, pilot client. And, uh, and I was able to, to secure that on a PowerPoint presentation, no technology. Nice, nice. Uh, so thinking, thinking about the the journey and and kind of that future direction, um, you know what what may, what's what are you most proud of in that time? Like we've touched base on a number of elements, but what stands out as the highlight for you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's the whole process and uh, and sticking to it. There, there's been times in my entrepreneur career where, um, you know, you go through these phases, especially. When you're younger, you're like, I'm, I, I can make money quickly, et cetera, et cetera. So going back mm. even to the Austin Global <laughs> wholesaling uh, kind of experience, there was a really good business actually there. And mm. because of my inexperience, uh, I probably let it go too early versus mm. just working out the problems, fi uh, putting out the fires and continuing. Um, I would have, pr and if I actually stuck that path, I probably would have been even more successful than where I am today. Um, so it's all about patience and there is a process and it takes time and, uh, and nothing is easy, right? So um, the more experience you get, the less mistakes you make, um, but you always have that hindsight. So I think now just taking those lessons that I've learned in the past and applying them as I move forward is something that I'm proud of and uh, being able to mentor other members of my team to embrace uncertainty, to, um, to, to see things in a different lens and to be a little patient from time to time. It's, it's actually really fun to see when people do embrace that um, and they come out the other end 
to see like their eyes open up because they learn so much by going through that experience because it's tough. It's not easy. From considering we started from the perspective of keeping our eyes open for opportunities and side hustles, and, and we've come full circle to the idea of, you know, being patient and really maximizing opportunity. I can't think of a better better way to, to end that story. Do you have time for a couple of quick rapid fire questions before we wrap up? Yeah, sure. Awesome. So you've been in a lot of roles, a number of companies. Out of all of them, what's been your favorite sales tool? Of the tools you've used, what's been your favorite? Um, so there is a tool called Equire. Mm. And uh, it basically is a plugin into LinkedIn profiles or other profiles so that you could just push a button and bring in a profile of a prospect into outreach or into uh, Salesforce or something like that. So it saves a lot of time. There's an actionable one. Um, Outside of work, we're whole people. So outside of work, what's your favorite movie? Oh, that's a tough one. I can't think of it on the spot, to be honest. Well, then, <laughs> what's the uh, what's the most recent one you've seen? Um, that's a good question. I haven't watched one in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Life of the entrepreneur and sales rep. Yeah, then, yeah. You know, one one last one then. When you were a kid, what did you want to grow up to be? A veterinarian. Nice. Ryan, this has been such a great conversation. Thank you so much for the time. And and for sharing so much about your journey. Thank you for uh, having me, Joseph. Uh, I know you and Synapse are going to do amazing things, and I can't wait to see the progress. And I know a ton of the people listening into this are going to be checking out the the jobs postings that you have, as, especially as all of these online programs get up and running. So if, if people are looking for those, uh, what's your website address? What should they keep their eyes open for? It's uh, www.getsynapse.com, mm-hmm. G E T. S-Y-N-A-P-S-E dot com. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, Ryan. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Same here. Thank you. Hey, talk soon.